get you fixed up again. Hello. Okay, what's left in my pile? I have rear trailing arms. Um, I'm gonna pull them out and show you here. So, bear with me. Let's see where I can go. Perfect. Okay, these are heavy suckers. Let me tilt you down a little more. I can just get right down there and explain some stuff. Okay, so these are uh, our rear trailing arms. Yeah, just one little quick thing. Um, yeah. Okay, one little quick thing. I'm super happy to have these lug nuts because these are very hard to come by. Um, these big shank style uh, lug nuts for half inch studs, half inch 20 studs. I haven't, we've been looking for them a lot of gyms and there's not a lot of companies out there that still make these. So awesome that I have all uh, 20 of them. Very cool. All right, so this is how our rear wheel sits in the frame. There's no control arms in the back. This is called a trailing arm. All right, and it's got, this is actually a pretty cool thing it's got on here. Originally, the trailing arm sits in the frame, in the back of the frame with just a bolt and shims on either side to keep it uh, aligned. This is a cool little racing setup. It's just two little joints with the bolt running through here. So it's still gonna have to be shimmed, but at least it will center a little bit better and it won't, uh, you know, do anything crappy. Oh, maybe that is all stock, actually. Yeah, that is all stock. That's the stock equipment. The not stock equipment is what's called pivot shafts, and it basically puts, uh, there's cups out here, and then there's two balls in here, two kind of half circles, and then uh, you can move the cups in and out to align the rear suspension instead of using those shims. That's probably what I'm going to end up going to. Uh, it takes a little bit of fab to get them all in the frame where they're supposed to be, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. So I'm definitely gonna do that. Um, so I got more, more half shafts on here. This is called a stub axle. Ow. This sits in the rear differential. And actually this is what's, this is what's gonna be turning our half shaft and, and then our wheel, and then our wheel in the back. Um, it's kind of weird about these trailing arms. You can see that they're straight like that. From what I can tell, from what I know, I think these are stock trailing arms, which is super duper surprising because in these old race cars, it's hard to fit a lot of tire in stock trailing arms. They make an offset that bumps out like that. So it gets you more clearance up here for, for a fatter tire. And he's running some fat, fat tires. And I'll go over those in a second. Um, this also has those two piece rotors. It's got Willwood calipers in the back. Uh, they're a little smaller. The rear ones aren't doing as nearly as much, um, but it's nice to have them back there for sure. I still got some steel braided line, some steel braided uh, brake hose here. I doubt that's gonna be good. Uh, the brake fluid is super corrosive, especially the racing stuff. So I imagine the calipers and the lines are, well, the calipers are gonna be, need to be rebuilt, but the lines themselves are most likely gonna be shot and I'm gonna to wanna to get all new, but that's okay. All right, so that's rear trailing arms. Two of them, obviously. Uh, and that's about it for this pile. And there's a rear differential over there. See it's sitting on the ground there. Yeah, right there. Um, I don't, I'm going to be taking the case off. I'm going to take the back cover off and go through and see what gear ratios I have. Um, for most of the tracks that we run, I can get away with 411s and 373s. For the shorter tracks, I'll run the, uh, the 411s and then something like Watkins Glen. I'll want those 373 gears in there. Um, oh my God. So much stuff. So much stuff. Okay. Uh, let's just do it.
Pull these boxes out so I can stand behind them. You'll have a chance of seeing me. I know, I'm very professional. You can tell I've been a YouTuber for ages. Okay, hello. Uh, I got boxes and boxes of stuff here. As you can see, this thing all came in boxes. I'll just kind of pick some stuff off the top. I won't go through everything with you. Some of it's just tin and garbage and kind of crusty, dusty, old, not going to be usable, but I'll, I'll try to pick out some of the trick cool units and, and show you that. So I guess I'll start with this. This is part of the transmission tunnel. It's been cut out. Uh, so you can easily access the top two bolts on the transmission, the top two ears there that, that, go, that go up to your bell housing. It just, a lot of race cars do this. They make the floors removable so you can get in there and take stuff out when you need to. It makes maintenance, a whole, track side maintenance a whole lot easier. Uh, this is a cool old boot. I'm probably just going to use this just like it is. Um, I don't have a floor right now. That's big. I have to source a floor. I have to source a 69 floor and a firewall and maybe even a birdcage. Not sure. I gotta do some thinking and planning on that. But anyway, that's kind of neat to have. Nice that it's original. This is just a little catch can. It was probably an overflow for, I don't know. Oh, maybe not. This might have been a power steering reservoir because it's got a pressure fitting here on it and then just a regular return. Um, you can see that has like a, it's a compression fitting on the end. So I don't think that would be a catch can. This might actually have been a power steering reservoir if he was running a remote pump and a you know a remote reservoir with a with a belt driven pump. I've got oil coolers galore. One. This is a. I don't know. Might even be a GM one. Hmm. That'd be neat. Well, it's an oil cooler. Whoever makes it. Definitely an older one. Another oil cooler. This one's a Harrison. This one's actually really cool. Uh, super vintage, super period correct. Um, and I'll show you the cool little air dam, this little air guider thing that, that someone built, did amazing tin work on. Um, and I think this fits right inside. So this is another oil cooler. It's gonna be good to have. I've got, okay. So this thing, is gonna be, it's gonna take coolant in these and oil in these little ones. So coolant goes in the bigger ones, oil goes in the little, little ones, and it uses the cooling system to uh, uh, remotely cool the oil before it goes back into the engine. This is just another cooling element that's really neat to have. Um, this is probably, you know, because they were running endurance racing, they probably needed all the cooling elements they could, they could fit in there. Um, keep you running. Keep everything under control. Here's another one, a much, oh no, this is, this looks like all oil to me. I don't, I honestly have never seen one like this. Maybe someone can tell me what this is. Um, yeah, I don't see any like radiator grill fins, unless they're inside. It looks like another one of those like swirl pot things where it takes oil and coolant, but I really don't know. It's all aluminum. It's old and it's super cool. So I have that. Okay, another oil cooler. This one's kind of a newer style. This is like, I don't know if you know Citrab or something like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't see their name on it, but it looks like one of their units. Another oil cooler. Uh, these are super easy to work with. Uh, this is kind of something more that, that I've done a lot with. Um, they're easy to mount anywhere. It's just an in and an out. And uh, yeah, be nice to have. All the cooling elements. This is called a Tattletail oil filter. Um, I guess it's just a flat filter that sits in there, probably to save some space. 
and uh, to run to run this, you know, you can kind of tuck it anywhere you need it. Maybe it was a secondary the secondary filter that they were using just for some secondary filtration. Um, I doubt this would be this would have been the only filter in the in the car for the engine. That would be surprising to me. But it's definitely a racing unit. Uh, Oberg makes it. It's made in the USA. Super vintage. Cool. Looks like the AM fittings are pretty good too. Okay, so that's that box. And some brake stuff. Uh, again, I'm, this brake stuff is all kind of going to be a huge question mark. These are remote reservoirs. This is going to be your two brake cylinders, your two brake cylinder reservoirs, and your clutch reservoir. This, I guess, would have run a, a hydraulic throwout bearing at some point. That's the only time you're going to need, uh, you know, a master cylinder for your for your throwout bearing. I'm probably going to end up running just a full mechanical throwout bearing, uh, you know, with a fork and solid linkage. Um, it's easier, less to go wrong, it's less to deal with. But this is pretty cool. I'll probably end up using these are Tilton. These are Tilton reservoirs. Um, I might end up using those if they're any good. These the reservoirs probably didn't go bad. They might just need new O-rings. Yeah, they don't look super bad. They're not like full of crap, which is good. This one's missing its. So inside here you have this little screen. That's just going to get you know big big particulates out of big contaminants out of your out of your fluid as you pour it in, and it keep the it'll keep the sloshing to a minimum inside these reservoirs, and this one is missing it, and I'm missing a top. But anyway, all right, this is a cool thing. This is a Willwood pedal box. Looks like I have clutch and brakes, clutch pedal and brake pedal. That's some kind of quick change. I don't know, maybe it was an oil pressure, oil pressure gauge line, I don't know. Get out of here. Get out of here! All right, so here's my master cylinders. Okay, and a brake wise, and a, oh, okay, cool. All right, so here's what we have here. This is a Willwood pedal box. Mm, mm, and it has three uh, plungers on there, right? So remember those remote reservoirs, they're gonna have lines coming off these plungers and into the and into the reservoir. So they're gonna be pumping fluid through these plungers and then out this side. These just have three, this one has a banjo bolt and then these just have three regular fittings on there. Um, bleeder screws up here, super cool setup, uh, vintage for sure. Hopefully this is all gonna be reusable and these master cylinders are rebuildable because these are nicer units than what I would be able to get. I would probably end up getting just a stock master cylinder or maybe a Willwood master cylinder, a two pot, you know, a, a, a two, a two re dual reservoir Willwood master cylinder. So this is pretty neat. Um, hopefully I can find a way to use this and I can find a way to mount it up and maybe I'll find a piece of roll bar over there that has the holes drilled in, drilled in to, uh, to take this. All right, so this, this little wire thing with the knob on it, this would get mounted on your dash. This is to move what's called the balance bar. So on your brake pedal, you're over here, okay. On your brake pedal, you see this thing, right, right where the wire goes into it, is gonna turn this, and it's gonna move the balance point. You see you have one pedal moving two cylinders here, right? So you're gonna move the balance bar, so you can adjust your brake bias. You can adjust which your front or rears come in first. Obviously, you're going to want your rears coming in first. Probably something like 60-40 is ideal. Um, but you can just kind of do it to feel. As you adjust this bar in the middle, as you would turn that bar, as you turn your knob, it's going to adjust this bar, and it's going to move the balance point to where it's going to move these plungers either one first at the same time or just a different, just a different ratio, different geometry. So that's, why, that's what makes this pedal box so nice, um, that it's all fully adjustable, and it's going to be right on your dash which is cool. Uh, they also make, and I think I saw one in here, um, an inline brake bias adjuster that interrupts the fluid transfer. Um, and usually those are gonna end up, you know, right next to your seat, right next to where you're sitting. But this will be, this will be mounted up on the dash. Hopefully I can make it all work again. 
definitely frozen up right now and probably full crud. That's that. Okay, what do we have here? Looks like a fuel filter. Nothing super special about that. Neat little fuel filter. Great. Ah! Uh, okay. Here is a quick release hub for a steering wheel. Uh, I have a steering wheel. It looks like an old like dirt steering wheel with a big pad on it so you don't break all your face bones when you face plant in it. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. Um, I don't think I'll be using this. Oh, maybe I will. Because this is like a weird collar he's got on there. To, it's like, it would be way further out. I would want that to be in closer. But it's just three bolts in there so I can take them out and use this quick change thing if I find the right spline you know, to, to go on my steering column. I might actually be able to use that. Put that in the gone through box. Okay. Yeah, this is probably an oil pressure gauge line. It's got this quick, this quick, uh, this quick connect fitting on there. A lot of guys did that. We have here some brake line. Looks like the brake switch was in there as well. So that would be your tail lights. Okay, this is another filter yeah this is another over tattletail filter so maybe they were running just these tattletails so there's two of them in here now and they both look different so maybe they ran both in line at different points in the oiling system that would be kind of neat i think they'll be they'll be able to be cleaned up as long as i can find the actual filtration element inside um, maybe i'll be able to use them again that would be neat so this is uh for the transmission this goes on the cross member the main the middle cross member on the frame uh, and then the transmission bolts up to these two bolts with a with a poly mount in between. Uh, I think I saw another one of these, but this one looks like it's in fine shape, so I'll definitely be able to use that. This looks like a catch can to me, a really well made catch can. Yeah, this would be this was probably a catch can for both valve covers. It looks like it had two lines going in here, and then and then this would be to empty it out maybe. Uh, or no, the petcock on the bottom is to empty it out. I don't know what the third one is for. It might not even be a catch can. It looks like a catch can to me. It doesn't look like it actually held any pressure because it's got this breather cap on there. Okay. Oh, okay, here's what I was talking about. So this is that inline brake bias, that, that fluid interrupter. Uh, as you turn this knob, it will adjust the, the fluid pressure from the front to the rear. So this just had a, a, a dual adjustable uh, brake system, which is neat. You know, you have your balance bar up here on the dash and then you would have had this brake bias adjuster down here. You can adjust the fluid pressures and you can adjust uh, which plunger is actually hitting it first. Kind of a neat setup. Oh, nice. There's my missing piece. You go in there. Still no top though. All right, I got a couple alternators. Make some juice, they're probably bad. That one's a Delco Remy. Probably both Delco Remy's, yep. This one's got a really a much longer shaft on it. Oh, because it doesn't have the pulley. Right. Okay. There's those two boxes. All right. Grab this one. Switch panel. Ew. Oh, God. 20 year old wiring. Yuck. Yeah, this is not. I'm not going to reuse this. I might reuse this housing because it's kind of neat and it's got cool, uh, like, just cool little, cool little setup all over it, but. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not gonna use this part. This whole rat's nest, I'm gonna do all new. New, new, new. But this is where uh, he had all of his fuses coming. So these look like all fuses and relays. Uh, and then you have your ignition and the key. The key is just, it's just like JB welded or bonded in there. Kinda cool. Fire. Ah! So that would be, the key would be your ignition. That would be your fire. And then just a whole bunch of toggle switches, you know, for your fans or your your fuel pumps or your, you know, whatever the hell.